loving Father, we want to thank you this morning again that we have the privilege of approaching your throne of grace and mercy. We want to thank you, dear God, that we could call on no one else but you. We want to thank you this morning that in Christ we are, on, we are complete. In Christ we receive power and strength. We want to thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit's presence that is here with us. We thank you for your angels that you have sent to encounter around us. At this moment, dear God, as we open your word, we pray that you may guide us, direct us, lead us, and give us the understanding to understand your word and to be better prepared to meet you when you come the second time we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch, therefore... For he know not what hour your Lord do have come. Watch therefore. For he know not what hour your Lord do have come. This morning Christ is admonishing us at his, as his people brethren. That we ought to watch. It is important to watch. Sometimes we watch what we should not watch. Sometimes our eyes are fixed on things that brings no joy and satisfaction to our lives. But this morning, the word of God is admonishing that we ought to watch for the coming of Jesus. Because we do not know at what hour Jesus is going to come. So it gives great importance that we watch. Verse 43 says, but know this since we do not know at what hour he will come he said but know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the fifth would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up the good man the owner of this house uh, the head of this house of this home if only he knew if only he was given a warning or a debt at the time that the fifth would come he would make sure that he had put everything in place he would not leave his home with no one there to watch he would have put security guards huh he would maybe have put an alarm so maybe the neighbor in hearing the alarm would know that something is wrong but he does not know huh? so because he don't know now the fifth comes the fifth breaks up take whatever that is in there that does not belong to him and when this man comes now he realizes that his home is broken up the same way Jesus is saying to us this morning we need to watch because we do not know at what time he is going to come we need to not set a building in order but we need to set our lives in order set our souls in order because we do not know at what time jesus will come now imagine a fifth planning to enter and break up somebody else's home and telling that person that I'm going to come next week Wednesday at 3 o'clock to your house to break and enter your house that would be a foolish fifth huh? because if he's coming at 3 o'clock I can guarantee you that the owner of this house would have already made the police know that by 2 o'clock they need to be there huh? probably he would have had his gun ready too or his cutlass or whatever because he would say maybe to himself Vini huh? now I'm not calling Christ a foolish man here but God wants us now to be wise that's why he's saying to us watch because you don't know you don't know at what time Christ is going to come watch but then as we look around we see signs of the time not true we see signs of the time we see that what used to be is not that that is being anymore as we watch we read the word of god 
we see what the word of God says is happening around us. So that tells us that the word of God is truth. That tells us that the word of God is not lying. That tells us that what God says is coming into fulfillment. So, since we, even if we do not know at what time Christ will come, but by what his word has foretell, we are seeing that his coming is near. Verse 44 says, Therefore, be he also ready. Let us be ready, brethren, for in such an hour as he think not the Son of Man come. When you think now, it's not Jesus Christ will not come soon. Christ will come. Yes, he said he will come. But I can I can still do my thing. I can still live how I want. I can still say, yes, it's not wrong to make plans. Huh? Because imagine you are a human being, you live in another sun, and you're living without no plans at all. It's, it's not making sense. It's best you have not life at all. Huh? You ought to make plans. But making plans, remember that Jesus has to be the first. As you make plans, never put Christ out of your plans. Make sure that Jesus is the head of every plan that we make. As a matter of fact, it's Jesus that brings the plans into fulfillment. Because you could sit and you could make so many plans, and then none of these plans may come into fulfillment. Or probably you sit and you make all your plans, brother chaos, and it's somebody else that didn't work hard as you that come in and enjoy what you did. I was working in Satan about uh, maybe eight years ago, and we we're building a house, and the owner of the house has, well, he had a handicapped child. He was moving around on a wheelchair. His house, it had two apartments. It had, well, it was on pillars, upstairs and downstairs. And he had to put an elevator in the, the home so that when his child came in, so that they could enter the elevator to go up to the higher level. He made that plan. He built his house that way in order that when son comes home that he is happy. But before the house finished, the son passed away. That's disappointing. Eh? Huh? I have put so much money into this project but only to realize that my son never enjoyed that. Huh? God is saying to us this morning, watch. Don't make no plans and leave Jesus out of it. Because your plans you may make. And because you leave Jesus out of it, your plans may come to reality. But you may be a lost soul. Be he also ready this morning. Suppose, brethren. Suppose... We would have heard it announced that Jesus would come on the 16th of January, 2018. Suppose that. Hmm? You would hear Jesus is coming. It is noised all around that Jesus is coming February, January, sorry, 16th, 2018. And we are in 2014. What would be your reaction? Huh? What would be your reaction? Would you have from now until 2018 prepare your life, stay in close relationship with Christ because he's coming the 16th of January 2018? Would you have done that? Or would you have said that 2018, I still have four years? Four years is not four days. Four years is not four weeks. Four years is not four months. Four years I have. Where I can wait, I can do all that I want to do. I can backslide and come back again. Huh? I can travel. I can build. I can rip. I can cut. I can sew. I can do everything because I have four years. 
what would be our reaction? Because we are four years. But brethren, this morning, so many have stood up in streets, in pulpits, and say, Jesus is coming on such and such a day. And up to today, no one has seen Jesus. So many have said that Jesus is going to come. I think sometimes last year, a year before, we had one who said that he was a prophet in St. Lucia saying that Jesus will come on such and such a day. And today is the 1st of February, 2014, and no one has seen Jesus. It wasn't long ago, I saw on somebody's internet, Facebook, that there is a preacher in St. Lucia. Lord have mercy. The preacher is from Africa, I think. Young man, nice young man, you know. Some of us, we're doing foolishness with ourselves. Belgian nom. Mais il dit, c'est mon Dieu qui a parlé. Et puis, il garde un monde ensemble. Qui a fait mon évangile, qui a dit mon bon Dieu, qui a fait mon Dieu, qui a fait tout ça. Un bon Dieu, qui a fait tout le monde pour mon éducation, pour mon manger. Il veut mon manger, c'est bon. Et, brethren, imagine people are in the fields, ripping out grass and eating grass. Mon gars, il a fait des animaux, et il a fait des animaux. Parce que nous, nous, ça l'a dit, c'est si on mange Zeb, il y aura Dieu, oui. Mais vous qui prenez la Bible pour aller dire, nous, c'est mon ça là. Que Jésus m'a pour sauver, vous. Jésus qui a fini encore. Jésus dit, gardez ça bas. Jésus dit, mais il y aura de vous fou. Il y aura de vous ça bas, vrai. Mais let me tell you something, Satan is in that. Satan is in that. When you realize there are those that say that they got healed because they eat the grass. Melanie sa yo mouche yo yon toilet ka vomi Ka vomi fiel yo Sal nom mwen sa Bon Dieu fe Setan yana fel ka mwen ezeb se de vongan asa E bon Dieu sa vouti de fe Se bef ki ka mwen ezeb Zeb Zeb vi do an la pa fet pou nom manje Men mi se vini E pi di vini an non jezi et puis, regardez les gens manger ça. Et puis, c'est pour où est-ce, mon frère Tous les gens qui ont Facebook, juste ask persons that have it, and go, you will see it. And to see people, women, children, too, you know. Is it in grass? They're ripping out grass, brother, but the big things of grass, and they're eating it down. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, mon frère. Brethren, in the days that we are living, we will see so many things happening. We are going to see so many things happening. Man is coming and say that they are coming in the name of Jesus. And they are doing this and that in the name of Jesus. Brethren, we need to watch. We need to watch. We need to read the word of God for ourselves. When people come and tell you things, don't just take what people tell you. I'm preaching for you this morning, but you have to go home and read the word of God for yourself. You have to go back through the scriptures that we read and ask God to inspire you. To have you to understand. Maybe I may say something that by mistake that is not so it is. Ask God to reveal to you. Amen. Don't take my word for it. God has, as a matter of fact, every one of us here should have a Bible or Bibles at home. Okay? They have things we're spending money for that is will not going to give us salvation. And we will spend so much money for it. But when it comes to the things of God, we are, we, 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 we are so, you know, I'm, I'm, a word was just selfish. Huh? We are greedy. When it comes to the things of God that will nourish us spiritually. Oh, I don't have money. Huh? Oh, that's really expensive. Oh, this and that. We're not doing it. I'm not contradicting you. The program that is coming up is important. But you don't have to take 200 euros and buy a dress. Okay? You don't have to take 200 euros by a dress. Huh? It's not the dress that you have on you, Christ will see. Christ will see your heart. It's not when you come and stand up there on that day of the program and then you look at each other in the eye and you do this and you do that. But when you go back home, you mom miserable. It's not that, not, not that that will save you. Okay? It's your heart Christ will see. Your heart. And before you come here and do it for me to see you, do it at home. 
Do it home before you come here. Because Jesus sees you everywhere. Let's tell seeing you everywhere. But Jesus, I could guarantee you, sees you everywhere. So practice what you preach. Do it at your home. And then when you come here, the others will see and they will want to follow. So it's not the clothes. The clothes will change nothing. You could your road room could be. Lord have mercy. That will not impress Christ. Your road room don't impress Christ. Is your heart. Your heart. We do not have guarantee, Reverend. We do not have guarantee that if we were to say, yes, I have four more years, that okay, because I have four more years, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I can say to you this morning, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And when I leave here, the next news that you hear, Lester passed away. When I stood here and I said that, did I have a guarantee? I said it. I said it with the belief that I want to see it come to pass. But sometimes it may come to pass, but I'm dead. <laughs> okay, no guarantee. When we look at brethren, we know the way life runs. We see how man lives under the sun. Those who have gone before us have set up, they have put plans, they have done this and done that. And most of them did not see it. Huh? Most of them may have said this word today and tomorrow they change it. And it's the same thing with us today. The same thing is, has no change, you know, brethren. C'est même bagay la nous a fait. Nous a dit un bagay, nous a dit belle parole pour faire moun kwe. Nice words to make people believe. And then tomorrow, another person to go and say, hey, Lester said that. Hey, man. Yeah, so you look at Lester on what he say. Don't look at me on what I say. Look at me how I live. Don't look at me what I say. Because what I say could fool you. What I say can fool you. And it is vice versa for every one of us. Huh? Jesus knows us everywhere. When I'm in my little closet, Jesus sees me. You don't see me, but Jesus sees me. Watch, brethren, for we do not know. He said, the first is that, let me, let me take that again. Eh? There are two considerations. The first is that we have no guarantee we will still be alive in 2018. And the second is that if you need, if you knew, sorry, you still had four more years to get ready for the coming of Christ, would that give any urgency to the present? Huh? Four years I have to plan. What's about now? Now, what I'm doing now? Don't look at the four years that have to come. Look at now. The Bible says today. If you heard the Lord's voice, harden not your heart today. Not tomorrow. It's quarter to twelve, not at twelve o'clock. Quarter to twelve. If you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. Because you are not even guaranteed at fourteen to twelve. You know that? We are not guaranteed at fourteen to twelve, much less twelve o'clock. So you hate now is now you have to make the decision, brethren. Not four years down the line. Four years down the line, so many things could have them happen. Huh? Tomorrow, so many things could have them happen. In the next hour, so many things could have them happen. Brethren, we cannot look at the next hour, neither the next day, neither the next year. We have to look at now. God wants us to watch now. He wants us to set our house in order now. Because the fifth is not saying when he's coming. And the fifth will never say when he's coming. You know how a fifth operates? If a fifth wants to break and enter a house in this community, it's not today he just comes and he just go and break and enter, you know. He may have even come to your house, ask you a question by passing the streets. Hey, hello. Um, um, bonjour. Good morning. I'm such and such. How are you? How are you doing? You know, you know your house is beautiful, eh? I like your flowers, you know? Everything like but while he's doing this or she's doing this, they are looking at you know. But where will, when I come, I see more people passing there, so I'll pass there. That his or she is observing. The person may just come in because but you don't know what you'll get. So the person is observing. Huh? So the person knows now at what time you're going out of your home, at what time you're coming back in, what time this area is, you know, 
school, what time there's noisy, there was no alarm. So when he hits now, he makes sure that he will come out victorious. But Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus don't have to come and survey because he sits in heaven and he sees everything that is happening down on earth. As a matter of fact, it's not Jesus that has to survey. We have to survey. Survey our lives. Not, I'm not supposed to look at Brother Charles. I'm supposed to look at my life. Brother Chaos have to look at his life. Now, as Brother Chaos looks at his life and Brother Lester looks at his life, I see that the Word of God is asking me to live this way. So I will live the way the Word of God is asking me to live so that when Brother Chaos now looks at his life and what God says, and he look at me, he's seeing that it is corresponding. So what does that do at this time? The both of us are walking hand in hand. The Bible says, can two walk if they're not agreeing? Huh? That cannot work. Huh? So if he checks his life, I check my life. You check your life. We all check our lives. Brethren, we've seen where there needs to be room for improvement. But while I'm looking at you and I'm seeing myself, I'm going down. Huh? You may have made your walk with Christ sure and you have fixed it up, but I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at you. Huh? Even Satan himself was fooled. When he came and he claimed the body of Moses, thinking that since Moses had struck the rock and he didn't speak as Christ had said, that Moses is a lost man. But the Lord had already forgiven Moses. Moses had already made everything right with God. So when Satan now thinks that I see where my papi check who says I'm but you didn't know sir. Uh uh. Ça passe à vos pièces. Même pas qu'elle a fait depuis Joshua. Il croit ça c'était ça lui aussi. Bon Dieu dit non ça. Mais c'est pas passé par du feu. Mais c'est happy with feu. Mais c'est pas ça. It's the same thing for us this afternoon. Jesus has he access to watch. We have to make investigation on our lives. Watch ourselves so that when that day will come now. When the fifth, who is Jesus, but is a good fifth, Jesus is there. Jesus is not a bad fifth. Eh? Because he tells you the fifth come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give life more abundantly. So we need to do some life investigation. So as we investigate our lives, when now that great day will come, and Satan now, will come to claim Jesus will say well this is mine this is mine that's not yours so brethren we need to watch let us keep watching it is important to watch brethren God has given us eyes you know why see what the bad is I imagine it imagine God didn't give us eyes how would life be from time I was born I can see I've tried to imagine if one day I come blind what will I do huh Someone who is born blind does not have a problem because that person has never sinned. So the person is accustomed to the situation that he or she is in. But someone who has not born blind and becomes blind, it is difficult. It's difficult, Christian friends. So if Christ didn't give us eyes, what would we have done? Hmm? He give us eyes, it is for a reason. But our eyes sometimes, we allow it to deceive us. Many times our eyes deceives us. Because our eyes sees what it don't have to see. And when the eyes sees fast, it brings a message to the mind very quick. Very, 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 very quick. You could stand here. And you are preaching, or you are speaking. Your concentration your eyes supposed to be meeting the eyes of those who are in front of you. But perchance, your eyes may glint on the outside. And probably as soon as you look on the outside, you see something strange. You watch and you go back, but immediately you go back there. Immediately your eye will go back there because it has sent a message to the brain that you have seen something. But since you are not sure what you see, you have to look again. And when you look the second time, your eye will stay there for a good while. That's how it operates. The eye, reverend. 
the eye but God wants us to watch let our eyes be fixed on Jesus be fixed on his word be fixed in his word that when he would come heaven he would find our eyes fixed on him huh no it's not a it's by sister Yolanda I think yeah, yeah? down there Christ wants us to watch brethren and our admonition to others is to also watch on Christ watch on Jesus brethren we ought to go out there and meet others and let them know that because there are others out there they do not know who to turn to they do not know where to look to but if truly we have come to meet Jesus if we have met Jesus if we know who Jesus is if we know what Jesus is asking of us we ought to encourage others to follow that same Jesus hmm? we ought to encourage others to keep their eyes on that same Jesus we need to let them know this message here is for us you know as people who have accepted or people who profess that they know Jesus that is a message for us not for the world you know for Christians that are Jesus is saying watch now, if Christ is saying watch, it is because Christ sees huh, that his, his children are not watching the way they should. Huh? It is because he says there's a problem somewhere. So he's admonishing to watch. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Watch because you do not know, brethren. We do not know at what time, what hour. Brethren, that's serious. You know. That's not joke, you know, brethren. That is not today's Sabbath and then tomorrow is Sunday and then a new week starts again and then we go through it as normal and then we come back in church Sabbath and we hear another message. That is serious business that they know, brethren. Our days are counted, you know. Our days are counted. That's not joke that day. Maybe I may never have to speak another message in church. Probably when you may speak again, you may say, hey, hey when Lester used to be there. Maybe I may say the same thing to you. That is serious. That is life and death situation. That is. If we are, if we go to sleep and we do not know Christ, brethren, we are lost. That's not joke. That is not joke. Imagine you living under the sun for so many years. You have been coming to church so many years, and when Jesus comes, you lost. Have we sat and think on that? Hmm? Brethren, salvation is yes, full and free. But since salvation is expensive, you know. Salvation cost Christ his life. No one else could have died to buy man, you know. But Jesus alone. No other death would be sufficient. But Jesus is death alone. Huh? So I must look at myself and I must say, I'm special. Indeed, I'm special. I am special. Huh? People will always find faults in you. Even you sometimes find faults in your own self. Huh? People will find faults in you. God Himself finds faults in us. Because that's why He always keeps calling us to come. 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 Because you know, if you stay away from Christ, you cannot be transformed. Transformation cannot take place with you out of Christ's presence. But it's while you are in His presence, the Bible says by beholding to behold Christ can you be away from Christ's presence and behold Christ? that can never happen to behold Christ you have to be in his presence huh? now in his presence doesn't mean because we gather in that building you know? you are at home and you are in this Christ's presence because you are in his word you are on your knees praying you are worshipping him you are in his presence so while you are in his presence by beholding him because it is he you are looking unto you are becoming changed so, brethren, people will find faults. People will find faults, but forget all faults people may find in you. But look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Because when Jesus comes, it is you and myself that will have to answer to Christ. Nobody. My mother will not answer questions for me. As a matter of fact, I may have to be thrown a question to answer on my mother's behalf too. Because I have a testimony to bear in my mother's presence. Because she is not a Christian. So I ought to bear testimony. Huh? If I give my mother the word of God, 
if I live the life that God demands in my mother's presence and she passed away, her blood is not on my shoulder. Hmm. But if I don't and she passed away, brother Chaos, who pay or who pay higher pastor keep sapale plimer he could preach the most beautiful sermon on the day of my burial it will not change nothing it will not change nothing because the life that i lived in her presence is what that will determine what she will become tomorrow i have a testimony to bear and it goes for each and every one of us every one of us so so don't worry what people say once you are doing a thing that goes with god word god bless your heart if when the person says what they say and you know for true it is against god word and you are living it check yourselves check yourselves but don't puff up don't get vexed humble yourself and say god thank you you are still speaking to me uh, you are still using somebody to have me to check myself okay but sometimes when we have things that you know against us we get angry we get mad who are you to be saying that against me who are you to be doing this well that's what we say most times but brethren when we hear these things we need to run to the foot of the cross we need to run and make our calling an election sure we need to watch brethren i live with you this morning the admonition from the word of god that we watch because we do not know the time nor the hour when the son of man cometh god bless you Amen.